there guys and welcome back to Unjade and Jade. Okay, so due to it being highly requested, today's video is all about my experience of A-level AQA chemistry. If you have no idea who I am, hi, um, my name is Jade. I've just finished my A-levels in the UK and I did maths, biology and chemistry. Absolutely no idea how, but I did somehow come out the other side of A-levels with an A star in chemistry. So yeah, I'd love to share my experience with you because Chemistry was such a problematic subject for me over the course of the A-levels. I nearly dropped it back in year 12. There were so many tears. It was basically just a bit of a roller coaster of a subject. So yes, perhaps if you feel like that about chemistry too, or you feel like that about another subject, um, this might be useful for you. Okay, so skip back to GCSE. I personally always found chemistry doable. Like, yes, it was hard and there were some hard concepts and some of the maths was a bit challenging, but it was doable. And I did get an A star, which I was very proud of. And I had great teachers and things were great. So when I decided to take it for A level, I thought, you know, Jade, you're fine. You can manage it. However, year 12 and the first year of A level chemistry were hellish for me. I really don't like slagging people off, especially teachers, because as people they can be really lovely and like really helpful and stuff. But the teacher that I had in year 12 for chemistry was just, yeah, just not like, not ideal. And I really massively struggled um, in one half of the chemistry specification that we were being taught by this one teacher. And in my first test with them, which was chapter two of AQA A-level chemistry, which is all the math stuff, which I can do now and it's fine now, but back then baffled me. I think I either got a D or a U. In my mind, I like to say D, but I remember like most of my class got U's. I don't think anyone got above a D, if anything. And I can remember coming home feeling so hugely disheartened and just thinking like, oh my God, if I'm getting this low, how the hell am I meant to improve considering that the first chapters are like the foundation for the harder chapters? Yeah, the first few weeks of A-levels for me were just pretty like, pretty grim. I can remember dreading going to chemistry lessons. And again, the teacher really did not help and having a good teacher transforms the way that you look at a subject. But you know what I did in year 12 when I had the bad teacher? Instead of giving up, which was very easy to do and which is what I think some people in my class did do because you have other subjects to juggle. I went and I saw my other chemistry teacher after school like twice a week and I asked her to go over stuff with me, begged her to explain how I'd gotten stuff wrong in my tests. And if I didn't understand it, I would stay longer or I'd look it up at home. I'd go on chem revise, go on chem guide, like look at it from a new perspective. I'd look in the textbook, I would try questions. Basically, when you don't understand something at A-level, please try your best to tackle it head on then. Because if you continue and you still haven't understood those basic things and you're still building on your knowledge, like that knowledge isn't gonna get better unless you put the time and the energy into it. So whether that is asking for help, you know, looking up stuff, looking up videos, asking your friend for help, just make sure you do the groundwork like at the time. And I think me putting in that special effort then really was kind of part of the secret of, you know, how I ended up doing well despite really struggling. And I did not get on with organic chemistry. Like I still struggle more with organic than I ever did in organic or physical. I just don't have a very like shapey brain as my teacher used to say. <laughs> I found it hard to visualize things and it was kind of the sort of thing that was almost like you couldn't just practice it. It required sort of like a natural ability to be able to do certain things in organic. Um, in organic um, well. So for example, drawing different isomers, I'd find it so hard to visualize 
different isomers and having to draw them like from my brain. I found that so difficult. But equally, it's so good to know your weaknesses within chemistry because then you can focus on them. Okay, so fast forward to the end of year 12. Seeing as I was doing four subjects, I knew that I would be dropping one. I just decided, you know what, I only need three good grades, so I might as well focus on three. Chemistry was not enjoyable by the end of year 12. I still really didn't like it. And for me, it was kind of between dropping chemistry or dropping English Lit. Now, I loved English Lit. I still love English. Um, I love reading, I love essays, love it. However, I knew that I was applying for biology at uni. And particularly when applying for Oxford, I knew that chemistry would just be more useful. Like they're quite interlinked. Chemistry gives you a very good grounding of certain understanding of things in biology. So as much as I greatly disliked it, the fact that I still managed to scrape an A at AS basically told me that like I was capable as long as I'd put in the work in year 13. And I would say it was only towards the end of year 12 that things did start to click when I started to do the like main bulk of proper revision and past papers for my AS exams. So yeah, I did take chemistry. I did take it through to year 13. At the end of summer, before I went back, I went over all the year 12 stuff again because you know, gotta have it fresh in the mind. But you know what? The crazy thing is, as year 13 went on, I really started to enjoy chemistry. Like it wasn't a chore anymore because I actually started to get it. And in chemistry, when you start to understand and you can pull the different aspects of chemistry together, you can understand the concepts, you can do the bloody hard questions. It is so satisfying and it is such an incredible subject. And um, when I help Falk it with chemistry, like the GCSE level stuff, and like he doesn't get it, but like, oh, I do because I've got my A-level knowledge. Like I just, I've, I have this real appreciation for the subject, which I never had back in year 12. Like it's just, it's just genius. Chemistry is genius. And it's just so like logical and you can work out things with your knowledge. I did have an amazing better teacher in year 13, so that massively helped. I still went to see my teachers regularly. I still asked every single past paper or end of chapter test we did where I got a lot of stuff wrong. Bam, have a meeting with that teacher and be like, help me, why is this wrong? And just making you understand your flaws and mistakes in the subject. That really helped me. So yeah, as the year went on, it was still hard. And yes, the difficulty did escalate in chemistry in year 13, 100%. But by the time the exam rolled round, I actually felt quite confident in my A-level knowledge, which is something that I really had not experienced in chemistry, like much at all. And I did somehow get an A-star, which is crazy, and basically fulfilled my wildest dreams. I put posters on my walls, like, I still have one. Why is this still on my wall? I don't even know. I still have, like, all these equations and stuff, like autocatalysis, homogeneous catalysts, heterogeneous catalysts, and other exciting stuff. I would just constantly consolidate things as we were going through the year so that I didn't forget content. I did past papers, I analyzed where I went wrong. I did my flashcards, I went on Chemrise, I went on Chem Guide. And if you keep hustling chemistry, it really comes together. But the second you give up on chemistry, chemistry gives up on you. So you just have to keep hustling at it if you're struggling. Practicals, I hated them, not gonna lie. Like maybe, maybe at the very, very end of year 13, I was like, oh, they're not too bad. But majority of sixth form, I was not a practical fan. Um, I'm just clumsy and like gawky and like awkward. And I just drop stuff and like smash test tubes with dangerous chemicals in. And like handling all the fine glassware. I was like, oh my God, this is hard. So yeah, they were just a bit stressful, but um, hey, I did it. I passed my practical endorsement, which you have to pass for AQA chemistry A level. Didn't like lab write-ups either, but Hey ho, you gotta do them. So a bit of an overview, honest review of chemistry. It is bloody difficult. It is hard. It is not an easy A-level, but then I feel like there really aren't any easy A-levels. However, what I do wanna emphasize, 
is that it is doable. It is an achievable subject. You just have to really work at it, especially if you find that your teacher maybe isn't so good at explaining things or perhaps you're just struggling like naturally to, to understand the math side of it or something. You do have to put in the work. You do have to put in the time. But with all the hard work and the effort, it really does come together. And if you feel like it hasn't done that for you yet and you're doing A-level chemistry, honestly, please don't give up. Like you can do it. You just have to keep at it. Just keep doing pass paper questions, find new resources, just know your flaws within the subject and know where your understanding is like a bit, a bit shaky and work at it. I wouldn't take chemistry unless you did pretty good at GCSE and, and that might sound harsh, but from my experience, if you scraped, like really scraped the grade that you needed to get onto the course, or if you're taking it because your parents want you to and you don't want to, then you might fail it in your mocks in year 12, just purely because it is a very demanding subject. And I say that out of tough love because I don't want you to take it unless you're willing to like put in that work and if you're kind of naturally inclined enough towards the subject. Just to put that into perspective, my class, I went to an average comprehensive state school, so it was kind of all academic abilities. And my class went down from, I think it was 25 to nine people between year 12 and year 13, just because people didn't pass. Um, and they either had to take up a BTEC or retake the year or retake chemistry. Yeah, like I say this with tough love. But yeah, if you are struggling with the subject, please know you can do it. You can get through. Even if it feels like you can't, you just gotta keep pushing through. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you'd like one of these for biology, maths, or English literature as well. Bye.